When you bought your ADOS 3000 or ADOS Link from Hunter, you probably got a set of mats that you may or may have not got to use today. Today, we're gonna bring out some of those mats and calibrate the surround view camera system on a 2020 Ford F-150. Today, we're gonna to go through the surround view camera system setup, entailing the calibration of this system. You're going to need a lot of space, front, side, and the back of this vehicle. You need just a ton of space to do this, so make sure that you have the appropriate area before you perform this. First thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is get into the diagnostics. This vehicle is an XLT, we'll select that and cycle the ignition. First thing you wanna do with any calibration is perform a pre-scan. This is gonna show if there's any DTCs prior to you starting the calibration. So we're gonna go ahead and do a pre-scan on this vehicle. I'm gonna select all, I wanna check all of the modules, I wanna check everything that's involved with this vehicle to see if there's any problems that would prevent me from calibrating it. I'm gonna select pre-scan. This is important, because I'm gonna have a pre and a post scan after I do the calibrations. This is gonna show that if I had any before DTCs, any after DTCs, and it's also gonna show the customer that the system was calibrated correctly. Our ADOS link has completed its scan of all of the modules. And as I scroll through, I don't have any DTCs that's gonna prevent me from doing this calibration. It also saved this pre-scan to our ADOS link for later on when we generate a report. Now I can go back and go into ADOS calibration. A couple options are gonna highlight here in just a moment, front-facing camera, front-facing radar and surround view camera. That's the one that we're going to deal with right now. We do have a couple options right now that show, have shown up. We have the 360 degree trailer assist camera alignment. That's what we wanna deal with today. The other ones here are something that might deal with a module replacement or a module initialization if you had to replace something. Those have already been handled, but today we're good. So we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and do the alignment on our cameras. If you've noticed or watched any of these videos in the past, you'll notice that the ADOS link is very intuitive, very tech friendly, and it's gonna walk you through every step of the way that you need to perform a successful calibration. You'll notice we don't have the DOS 3000 rack with us today. It's not necessary, but we do need the mats, which we'll show here in just a moment. And the first thing that's gonna tell us to do is what we need. It always tells you what you need. We're gonna need our calibration mats, which I have them here with us. A tape measure, that's pretty much it, honestly. Maybe a marker will help you as well to mark the spots on the floor that you're going to be making for these mats. Again, you're gonna need a lot of space. I'm gonna press continue. Now remember, just like any other time that we've done any videos, there's always a set of requirements that are going to be necessary to perform this calibration correctly. And that is no difference here, and that's what they're telling us on the screen. Make sure no DTCs are present. We've already done that. Battery voltage has to be within 11, 8, and 15 volts. And remember, it says if a module is replaced, module reprogramming is required. That's already been done. And again, I'll show you that another time. And if the cameras were replaced or removed or anything like that, this is why we're doing that. So we're going to press continue and go ahead and and go to the next one. And again, tells us anytime that it's been removed, replaced, serviced, all of those things that would require this. And your required preconditions will show up as well. Make sure again, plenty of space, good lighting, nothing around the vehicle, keep an open area. Tires need to be inflated to the correct specifications. Wheel straight ahead as well. Any modifications to the vehicle need to be addressed before you do this. We're gonna do the guided tour summary. And if you see right here, it's showing how much space requirements you really need um, in front, side, and back. And that's six feet from tires all the way out on both sides, and then substantially backwards and substantially forward as well. 
So make sure you have enough room to do this. And when I start unrolling these mats, you're gonna realize, whoa, I do need a lot. And it'll make a lot more sense when you really get to see it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to actually measure our rear tires. So it's gonna have us measure actually from the rear blocks of the tread. So you wanna make sure that you're getting as far to the, that back tread, not all the way out to where the sidewalls are, but where the back tread is, that last tread. We're gonna measure both from there to there on the rear tires in centimeters, and then we'll press continue. We're at 193 centimeters. Keep that number in mind. We're gonna enter that next. So our measurement of C is 193 centimeters. It's gonna ask us to enter that now. 193, press done, continue. So now the next set of measurements we need to do are from the outside of the, not the center of the wheel, but from, that, but from that tread block itself. So we've got to do 17 centimeters from each tire and put a mark on the ground. I'm going to use some masking tape and my Sharpie, so I'm not drawing on the concrete. Makes it a little difficult anyways. And we're going to mark all of these positions 17 centimeters away from the edge of the tread block. The nice thing about the ADOS link is it's already done the math. If you were to do the Ford procedure and using an IDS, you actually have to do a little math in here. ADOS link takes the guesswork out of it. They've already done the math and told us exactly how far we need to go from each end of the tread block of the tire in each four corners to start getting our mats set in their correct position. So I'm gonna mark that first before I press continue. We've made all our marks 17 centimeters away from the edge of the tread block on the tire and you make that line a little longer as you saw me mark it so that's easier to line up the mats. I'm gonna press continue. Now it's gonna have us starting laying out our mats. So we're gonna align each of the mats with the front and rear lines that we just made on the ground. And you also wanna make sure that you're giving yourself at least 240 centimeters of this mat to the back and front hanging over, which won't be a challenge with this as long as they are. Once I have the mat set out, I'm gonna double check to make sure that I am parallel with the vehicle. So I still have my tape measure. I'm still gonna just double check everything to make sure that it's all good. But right now what I'm gonna do is take the mats out that we have in our kit and lay them down on both sides of this vehicle. Remember, we need to have at least 240 centimeters overhang. And I'm well beyond, I'm good. So, I'm gonna worry about these marks now, make sure that this is level, that they're parallel with each other. Okay, let me go check that one now. With the size of these mats, it may require two people to help you get it set up to make sure that it's parallel as they're quite large. With that in mind, also try and make sure you're not getting any wrinkles on the mats. Keep them wrinkle free. And at all costs, try to, as best you can, not step on them. Good on this one. We're gonna move over to the passenger side and get that one laid out now as well. If 
You'll also notice there's some arrows. Those gotta to point towards the front. So keep that in mind when you're unrolling it. If you don't see the arrow right away, you might be off. Just make sure you flip it around. Now it's time to line them all up. Again, we're making sure that these mats are parallel with the vehicle. So I'm gonna compare the back tire and the front tire with the mark and the edge of my mat. Make sure that we're parallel. So my mats are in position, I'm parallel with the vehicle. Make sure 1.3 centimeter difference is all you're allowed to have. So make sure that you're parallel when you're doing this. My mats are set up, that means I can press continue on the scan tool and see what it tells us to do next. Again, just make sure that you're reading through, that your distance is where it's supposed to be. I've got more than 240 hanging back behind the vehicle, and I've got more than 240 hanging above the front of the vehicle, centimeters that is, for my mats. I've also verified that they are parallel with the vehicle and that I'm not exceeding or skewed too much. So we're gonna press continue. Once I press continue, it's gonna go through the calibration. Make sure that nobody enters the area. Do not turn off the scan tool, things like that. Close all doors. And also where I'm standing right now means I need to get the hell out of the way as well. So what I'm gonna do is step over and allow this to calibrate. Calibration was successful on this vehicle. At this point, there really is no test drive for this sort of system, but you do wanna take it and kind of go in reverse and make sure that everything and all the lines are where they're supposed to be, nothing skewed. Other than that, we can return this back to the customer. Our scan report has been saved as well. Make sure you get a copy to the customer, either email or print it out. But we're all set. Thanks for watching.